Hi everyone, a very good morning to all of you. Today is 18th of April and I welcome you all to Hindu newspaper analysis discussion. So guys, in this particular session, we are going to discuss entire analysis of Hindu. We are going to take all the articles which are relevant for our examination. And also I would like to tell you before starting this session that nowadays a large number of articles are oriented towards, polit uh, towards the political campaigning, manifestos of the political parties and such things. Please don't waste your time reading all those unnecessary articles. So you have to be selective uh, in these few days. Now moving on, uh, every class we start with the GS quotation. So today we are going to take quotation from Immanuel Kant, German philosopher. And uh, let's see that what he says. Now these quotations can be used to complement your answers in mains as well as in essay. So Immanuel Kant says that in law, a man is guilty. If he violates the right of others, okay, so if you violate the other person's right, you are guilty, you will be punished by the law. However, in ethics, he is guilty if he only thinks of doing so. So, when we talk about ethics, guys, ethics operates on maximalist principle. It operates on maximalist principle. What should be ideal? What should be perfect way of life? All these things, what ethics pertains to. So, ethics is largely about your intentions. Ethics is largely about your intention. So, even if you think to violate the right of other people, then you are guilty in the court of ethics. So, this is about it. You can use it in GS paper number 4, Ethics, Integrity and Aptitude. Fine. Now, moving on and let's take first article for today. So, first article that we are going to take is from the page 1. Center tweaks green credit program uh, to focus on restoration of ecosystem. Now, this article we are going to see with respect to GS paper number 3, government initiatives with respect to the environmental conservation. Also, with respect to prelims environment section, we will take this particular article, prelims environment section. So, let us get started with this particular article. However, guys, before going in the detail of this particular article, first of all, we need to understand certain background information as what this green credit program is all about because if we don't know this green credit program then basically uh, you will not be able to make much sense of this particular article So, first of all, uh, what is this green credit program and in this direction, I have uh, given you basic information here also. So, guys, as this information is not provided in the article, I will advise you to please download these notes. So, first of all, first of all, guys, uh, understand few things. Just a minute. First of all, guys, understand this particular thing that Prime Minister of India, Prime Minister of India, Mr. Modi, in 2021, in 2021, that is COP26, Glasgow, he took Panch Amrit Pledge. He took Panch Amrit Pledge. Under this Panch Amrit Pledge, it was said that by 2070, 2070, India will become carbon neutral. Also, it was provided this particular thing that to sensitize public with respect to environmental conservation. Okay. Government is going to start the nudging programs. Okay. Now, guys, what happened? Eventually, Life Initiative was born. Life Initiative was born. Now, this particular Life Initiative, it aims to sensitize the public with respect to environmental conservation and all such kind of a things. Now, guys, understand this thing that if we want to become carbon neutral by 2070, what we need to do? We need to invest in, we need to invest in we need to invest in environmental, environment and ecological conservation. And in this particular direction, what has happened, India came out with a program. And this program is Green Credit Program. Green Credit Program. Now, this Green Credit Program is a part of Life Initiative. Now, in this Green Credit Program, what we do? We nudge individuals. We nudge individual. We nudge the private companies, private companies, civil societies. NGOs that they come forward and invest in green activities. They invest their time in green activities. What are these green activities? Let's understand that also. So basically, guys, there are certain activities that are recognized. For example, tree plantation. Okay. Second is water management. 
to implement strategies to manage the water conserve the water for example rain water harvesting is there rain water harvesting is there after that guys uh, there is one important aspect that is the grey water management now what is grey water management so water that has been used for example in cleaning purpose water that has been used for some other purposes that water is to be purified that water is to be reused so grey water management sustainable agriculture promote eco friendly and sustainable agriculture practices now if you um, if you know towards punjab and haryana a lot of paddy is grown now earlier also i have told you that in order to grow paddy minimum rainfall that is needed is 100 cm this is a minimum rainfall that is needed but in haryana and punjab rainfall is in between 40 to 55 cm but there they are growing paddy which needs 100 cm of rainfall they are doing that thing by exploiting the ground water so this is not a sustainable agriculture practice this is not a sustainable agriculture practice okay then waste management implement effective waste management systems okay so that impact of waste on environment can be minimized air pollution reduction so incentives to reduce air pollution to improve air quality how pm 2.5 uh, uh, how pm 2.5 can be reduced all such thing mangrove conservation mangrove restoration so these are some of the activities which are recognized as the, as activities permissible under the green credit program green credit program so individuals what they can do they can invest in any of one activity and what they'll happen they will earn the green credit they will earn green credit okay suppose what you did suppose what you did there was this degraded land in this degraded land you have planted let's say 1000 trees 1000 trees now because you have planted these 1000 trees you will get a green credit green credit now a question will come in your mind that what i will do of this green credit okay is this a kind of a credit that we get while we play the candy crush game no this credit will have some monetary value now see this particular thing these particular credits you can sell these credits what you can do you can simply sell so where you can sell now guys understand this particular thing that suppose suppose there is some corporate and the corporate wants to start a factory they want to start a factory and for factory what they want they want land they want land okay so what actually they are doing they are diverting the forest land for the non-forest purpose they are diverting the forest land for non-forest purpose and under under the existing forest laws these organizations what they have to do they have to recompensate they have to recompensate okay how they need to recompensate so if you are diverting the land from here at other some other patch of land you need to develop you need to plant the trees you need to recompensate now understand these things these corporates these corporates rather than planting the trees what they can do they can buy credit from you now you have already planted the trees you have already planted the trees and they can buy the credit from you and their obligation will be fulfilled their obligation will be fulfilled so what can be done okay so uh, these credits can be claimed by the organization fine to comply under the existing forest laws that require these organization to uh, which divert the forest land for non forestry purpose to recompensate to recompensate also also guys many of the corporates many of the corporates as a part of csr as a part of corporate social responsibility also they can buy these credit now understand this thing corporate social responsibility so companies act companies act 2013 section 135 so the companies who are above a particular threshold which is defined in the terms of turnover gross uh, turnover their profit they have to invest in csr okay they have to they have to invest in the csr activities so under csr green activities is also a thing so companies can also buy these green credit and they can show that expenditure as a part of their csr expenditure so this is the way you can trade your credit so i hope that you got the green credit initiative now also under this initiative there is a green credit registry that will be developed and this green credit registry will help to track and manage these particular credits that have been earned who earned what credit credit is transferred to which person all these information all this thing will be managed here in the green credit registry fine so this is that now guys uh, some other things also i just want to tell you some other things apart from this also i want to tell you fine so we understood green credit it is under the part of life the activities that are covered green credit registry we have seen now who is the nodal agency to implement it it is the union 
इट इज द यूनियन मिनिस्ट्री ऑफ मिनिस्ट्री ऑफ एनवायरमेंट फॉरेस्ट एंड क्लाइमेट चेंज ओके ना अंडरस्टैंड दिस पर्टिकुलर थिंग इज दैट सपोज यू वॉन्ट टू यू वॉन्ट टू प्लांट द ट्रीज ऑन सम डिग्रेडेड लैंड सो इंडियन काउंसिल ऑफ फॉरेस्ट्री रिसर्च एंड एजुकेशन फाइन इंडियन काउंसिल ऑफ फॉरेस्ट्री रिसर्च एंड एजुकेशन दिस इज एन ऑटोनोमस बॉडी अंडर एनवायरमेंट मिनिस्ट्री देयर यू हैव टू अप्लाई देयर यू हैव टू अप्लाई एक्चुअल ए फॉरेस्टेशन विल बी डन बाय द स्टेट फॉरेस्ट डिपार्टमेंट ओके दिस इज समथिंग दैट यू शुड नो नाउ बेसिकली गज गाइज वट हैज हैपेंड रिसेंटली गवर्नमेंट हैज मॉडिफाइड और हैज कम आउट विद सर्टेन चेंजेस दे हैव कम आउट विद सर्टेन चेंजेस इन दिस green credit program green credit program now why the changes are brought government government stumbled on this particular thing that what might happen certain individuals certain companies certain entrepreneurs what they'll do they'll simply plant the trees simply plant the trees will claim the green credit and will encash that green credit but our objective is not just planting the trees our objective is that these particular trees should survive also these trees should survive also now you plant a tree today after 6 months or after 1 month 2 month it might not be able to survive so what we need to do we need to we need to ensure that ecosystem needs to be restored ecosystem needs to be restored so you will plant a tree now this particular tree will capture carbon for next uh, let's say 30 40 years and in this way the ecosystem restoration will happen so basically it has been provided it has been provided that so oh, just minute i'll clean it up so basically it has been provided it has been provided that what you need to do you need to now it has been provided that a primacy must be accorded to restoring ecosystem over merely just planting the trees so you will apply to this body that is indian council of forestry research and education the plantation will be done plantation will be done and two years after the plantation an evaluation will be done an evaluation will be done and on the basis of that particular evaluation you will get a green credit so merely how many trees were planted doesn't counts trees were planted after two year after two year how many of them have survived of how many of them have survived on that particular basis green credit will be given okay so this is about the change that has come also one more change guys have come also one more change has come here now what is this change let's understand this also so basically earlier government said earlier government said that if you want to if you want to qualify uh, see let's say there was a degraded landscape there was a degraded landscape now you say that what i have done i have regenerated this landscape and if a degraded landscape is to qualify for a reforested landscape okay so if a degraded landscape has to qualify as a reforested landscape then at least 1100 trees per hectare has to be there 1100 trees per hectare has to be there this was earlier rule by the ministry of environment but this particular rule has been rolled back why because guys many a places for example if you will go in rajasthan fine their water availability is not that much and they trees might not be able to survive there you can grow shrubs you can grow certain bushes you can grow certain grasses certain herbs okay now this is also the green cover this is also the green cover and but why you are restricting them to the trees why you restricted that to the trees so basically now it is in the hand of state it is now in the hand of the state that the state will define that okay what can be grown in that area whether the planting trees only will qualify for reforested landscape or you can plant shrubs herbs grasses okay this is all about it i hope you have understood it okay guys any question if you have you can please write here in the live chat i'll answer your questions and now moving on and let's take the next article okay uh, so article it reads great indian bustard and climate action verdict we'll see this article with respect to the gs paper number 3 again environment as well as in gs paper number 2 gs paper number 2 fundamental rights also we are going to see this particular article so let's get started with this article now first of all article reads mention something about the great indian bustard so what is a great indian bustard so great indian bustard great indian bustard is the state bird of rajasthan state bird of rajasthan as per iucn international union for conservation of nature iucn red list iucn red list 
this great indian bustard is critically endangered critically endangered just few hundred of the great indian bustard are remaining majority of great indian bustard are found in rajasthan gujarat some parts of andhra pradesh madhya pradesh also they are found but majority they are in rajasthan and gujarat and around around 90% of them around 90% of them are in the rajasthan only rajasthan only okay now basically great indian bustards population has declined considerably great indian bustards population has declined considerably okay and for this particular for the conservation of their great indian bustard a petition was filed in supreme court now why the petition is being filed in the supreme court let's understand this particular thing so basically basically um yes so basically i told you that majority of population of great indian bustard is where it is in rajasthan and gujarat but at the same time both of these states rajasthan and gujarat they hold significant potential for solar and wind power also solar and wind power also now just recall india's carbon neutrality by 2070 target carbon neutrality by 2070 target moreover 50% of india's installed energy should come from renewable by 2030 should come from renewable by 2030 this is a target that india has taken so recently what did what happened india updated their indc intended nationally determined contribution so indc goals were taken by the countries as a part of their 2015 paris agreement india revised the indc's recently and said that fine our 50 percent of electricity will come from renewable 500 gigawatt of electricity will come from renewable so for that solar and wind is very important and majority of potential of solar and wind is in rajasthan and gujarat but here great indian bustards also live great indian bustards also live now basically what is a problem now problem is this that these great indian bustards have a poor frontal vision they have poor frontal vision and because of their poor frontal vision many number of times they get collided with wires they get collided with the wires okay transmission lines and because of that their electrocution happened and they die they die so activists they approached supreme court and said that please put a ban on the lines put please put a ban on the lines that are being erected throughout the state to transmit this solar as well as the wind power now supreme court what it did supreme court initially initially it imposed a ban on laying of the overhead power lines over 99,000 square kilometers of area, they imposed a ban that no overhead wire will be laid there. Also, it was said that if any wire has to be laid, that has to be underground. Uh, sorry, existing power lines need to be made underground. Existing power lines need to be made underground. No new wires are to be deployed here. Now, what happened? Government. Government approached Supreme Court. Government approached Supreme Court. Government challenged the order. Said that there are a lot of international climate commitments. For example, our INDC goal are there. Our INDC goal are there. We want to be carbon neutral by 2070. If if you we impose all these things, then the solar and wind power potential of Gujarat and Rajasthan cannot be harnessed. And because of their potential cannot be harnessed, how we will meet these international climate commitments? Then what happened? Government modified its order and recalled back the blanket prohibition on transmission lines that were there also guys now the most important thing will come now most important thing will come so what happened supreme court recognized supreme court recognized that there is a right to be free from adverse impact of climate change and this particular right flows from article 21 right to life right to life now, when we talk about Article 21, right to life, it has been expanded considerable in the last few years. For example, in Puta Swami case, for example, in Puta Swami case, it was provided that right to privacy, right to privacy is included in Article 21. Now, it has been said that you have a right to be free from, right to be free from the adverse impact, negative impact of climate change. It is your Article 21. And for that, for that, what we need? For that what we need for that we need clean energy for that we need clean energy and clean energy will come from solar it will come from wind okay so getting clean energy through solar and wind will protect us from climate change and it is a fundamental right so what has happened 
what has happened saving species space saving great indian mustard is important but getting a clean energy which will protect you from climate change this is also your fundamental right this is also your fundamental right so this is something that has happened now guys one of a thing is that one of a thing is that that supreme court said uh, that this fundamental right is there but it has not elaborated it much it has not elaborated it much now if we talk about environmental laws or if we talk about the environmental judgment there is mc mehta case mc mehta case now there are multiple mc mehta cases which are the ones which have clarified the supreme court's stand on environment but this time they have not elaborated that much now this article says that actually there is one issue also that developed here what has happened this particular judgment this particular judgment provided that actually there are two competing choices there are two competing choices protecting biodiversity that is protecting the great indian bustard this is one priority and uh, allowing mitigative climate action okay now see solar and wind power when you are developing what are you doing you are doing some climate action now see climate action is one protecting the great indian mustard is other if we try to protect the great indian mustard then then this will be compromised however if you if you are going to deploy more uh, more electricity then the great indian mustard might compromise because those transmission lines they get electrocuted in that so this particular judgment has put forward that these are two competing priorities you take other you will sacrifice you take one you sacrifice the other this is something that has happened now article says that this is not a good approach this is not a good approach rather than this we need to move towards a just transition framework just transition framework now just transition framework is being utilized the, around the world now what is the just transition framework it is it is it is that it makes transition to a low carbon economy equitable and inclusive and it is a little bit slow also so climate uh, carbon transition means let's say we are getting majority of our power through coal now we want to move to the solar we want to move to the hydropower this is a low carbon economy transition low carbon economy transition but in that transition ensures that it is equitable it is inclusive you are not leaving the biodiversity you are not leaving the biodiversity so this is something that means they say this particular thing says that we need to accommodate both at the same time we need to accommodate both at the same time so please don't please don't preclude climate action and protection of biodiversity as adversarial choices this is something that should not happen okay also guys uh, this particular this particular judgment this particular judgment if it would have balanced the great indian now as of now as of now nothing concrete has happened just supreme court has recalled the order and has recognized recognized that solar and wind power are the components of clean energy which is important but this case is also one uh, this case could, could be one which would have considered a non human interest non human interest fine great indian bustards and this particular judgment could have become the precursor for many of the global judgments fine so this is all about it however guys however guys this core issue can be used as a case study can be used as a case study in development versus environment debate development versus environment debate moving on okay on india's heat action plan on india's heat action plan now this particular article guys we are going to see with respect to gs paper number 2 development related issues as well as gs paper number 3 environment okay and in gs 1 geographical phenomena is also there that also we'll see because of the heat waves it is talking about fine let's get started with this particular article now guys uh, you might be hearing a lot in the news fine that imd it has predicted that their maximum temperature will be high compared to the preceding years and actually this is not new every year <laughs> records are being broken be it in the terms of winter be it in the terms of summer so this year also the maximum temperature that is seen in north india etc it will go up also it has been seen that it has been said that the frequency of heat wave conditions over eastern and south in india will also go up there will be more severe heat waves that will be there now first of all first of all what is a heat wave what is a heat wave now according to imd now heat waves will be different 
ओके हीट वेव्स डिपेंड्स ऑन द फिजियोग्राफी तो इफ यू आर लिविंग इन नॉर्थ इंडिया यू आर यूज टू स्कॉर्चिंग टेम्परेचर्स सो योर इन योर केस हीट वेव माइट बी डिफरेंट a person living in mountains for them heat wave will be different so according to imd according to imd heat wave is when the maximum temperatures in the plains it is more than 40 degree so in plain if that maximum temperature is more than 40 degree that is a heat wave if it is 37 degree or plus in the coastal region so in coast it is 37 degree and if it is 30 degree or higher than the in the hills then it is a heat wave so 40 degree in plains 37 degree in coast and 30 degree in hilly area so if temperature more than this it will be classified as a heat wave now basically severity of heat wave depends as how much deviation is there as how much deviation is there okay so for example for example 40 degree is let's say the limit if it is 48 degree then it is intense heat wave it is just 42 degree 43 degree then it is a mild heat wave so intensity depends on how much deviation is there now because of these heat waves lot of fatalities can happen and it is a kind of a natural disaster so therefore national disaster management authority as well as imd indian meteorological department they are working with the states to develop the heat action plan they are working with the state to develop the heat action plan what are these heat action plan they are the standard operating procedures that have to be used by the state in the case of a heat wave heat wave now uh, basically uh, these databases are there okay such certain states such as the odisha maharashtra they are also laying out the district level heat action plan okay because entire state you cannot say it will have the same climatic weather conditions now when we talk about these heat action plans what are they what are they so these heat action plan they have a lot of things for example they will use a forecast to predict the heat wave in advance once they predict the heat wave they will warn the people they'll alert the public that okay there is a red wave red alert there is orange alert okay or there is some another kind of an alert that is there they will educate the public through the campaigns that okay if you are going out in noon in the summers you need to uh, you need to ensure that you are taking these precautions get stay hydrated stay hydrated fine uh, look for a shade so basically what will happen forecast will be used warning systems will be designed public will be alerted public will be educated with respect to the heat waves also heat shelters will be developed where the people can take some shade cooling centers will be developed water clean drinking water will be provided so that the people don't face dehydration also these heat action plans they also provide the directives to hospitals also so that they stay well equipped they have essential medicines they have essential medicines they have essential healthcare workers so that they can treat the patients okay also in the long term long term measures will also be there now when we talk about long term measures so urban planning strategy okay how the cities need to integrate green cover how they need to integrate blue cover so urban planning strategies will be there tree plantation will be promoted heat resistant buildings will be developed heat resistant buildings will be developed using the native materials reduce the urban heat island effect now see today in cities today in cities we see that a lot of concrete is used lot of a um, lot of asphalt streets are there dark color materials are used glass is used so because of that what happens in city you will find that temperature is higher compared to the nearby village or forest we call this as an urban heat island effect urban heat island effect so how this urban heat island effect can be reduced fine cool roofing technology if you paint your roofs white if you paint your roofs white it will reflect a lot of incoming solar radiation so how you can design cool roofs okay all these particular things will be done so this is all what is contained in actually the heat action plan fine so this is all that is contained in the heat action plan fine and now ndma is designing these heat action plans with the states assistance now article further provides that actually this is good that we are coming out with these heat action plans but in the heat wave we need to include other components also we need to include other components also now what other components should be included here 
what other components should be included here let's understand this thing include include the humidity humidity and the heat waves during the night also factor the dry heat factor the dry heat now basically guys understand this particular thing that see there is dry bulb temperature there is a dry bulb temperature which measures temperature which measures a temperature in a normal situation you just put a thermometer in the room you measure temperature with the reading that you will get it is a dry bulb temperature then there is a wet bulb temperature wet bulb temperature wet bulb temperature measures humidity it measures humidity now when we combine the temperature and humidity we get heat index we get heat index okay now understand this particular thing that temperature when it combines with the humidity it makes condition worse it makes condition worse and you might be if you if you are living in some coastal area if you are living in some coastal area even let's say the temperature is 35 degree celsius but if the humidity is high this 35 degree celsius is far less bearable in 42 degree celsius fine 42 degree celsius will be bearable if humidity is not that much but 35 degree might not be bearable if the humidity is very much high so we need to factor the conditions of humidity we need to factor the night conditions also in these heat action plants moreover it is being provided that see vulnerable populations vulnerable populations also they need to be factored in right now heat action plans they talk about they talk about the protection of vulnerable population in vulnerable population they talk about children low income community people elderly people but actually concrete actions concrete actions are not provided here concrete actions are not provided here that exactly what will be done now see this thing 90 percent of india's economy is informal there are the pushcart vendors roadside vendors chai walas household help okay ferry walas sanitation workers many such people are there which have to work throughout the day exposed in open areas without a shade so we need to counter about them also and heat action plan currently are standalone plans and they have a limited finance so also what needs to be done financing is also to be provided to these heat action plans so this is all about it fine i hope you have understood it now moving to next article missing colleges now this particular article we are going to see with respect to a particular case study in gs paper number two social justice education and health education and health segment as a case study we are going to see this particular article now guys understand this particular thing when we talk about india you all might be knowing that the state of health is not in a very good shape doctor to population ratio is not good doctor population population ratio is not good now according to who there should be one doctor for 1000 people but in india we have one doctor for 1456 people means doctors are less means doctors are less and for that what we need to do we need to graduate we need to uh, we need to provide medical education to more and more people but that medical education needs to be inclusive fine it should not be very much expensive and for that what happened we have come out with the aims institutions all india institute of medical sciences now we are developing the aims across the country across the country why we are developing the aims so that through these aims we can train talented medical professionals we can train talented medical professionals and they can bridge the gap between a demand and supply in india and they can improve the poor doctor patient ratio so we are developing the aims now government in 2003 came out with the pradhan mantri swasthya suraksha yojana and one of our goal of this pradhan mantri swasthya suraksha yojana was to develop the aims like medical institutions okay and in 2006 six aims like medical institutions were created today there are 20 aims institutions that are functional and three are under development okay so we are developing the aims like institutions to make medical education accessible to people okay now this particular article is talking about aims madurai aims madurai now aims madurai point is that aims madurai has started taking admissions from 2021 but even till now they don't have a building they don't have a building okay and the students there students there find their building is not there infrastructure is not 
ready and the students are getting suffered students are getting suffered so the article says that actually actually if you see if you see doctor population ratio is poor i told you this is the who data this is a little bit old data but if we see doctor population ratio right now it has become even more worse one is to uh, just a minute. Fine. This one is to one four five six. It is WHO data. It is WHO data. Fine. This I need to again cross verify. But anyhow, leave that. Point is that point is that doctor to population ratio is poor. Doctor to population ratio is poor. And high profile institutions such as Ames Madurai not infrastructure not getting completed on time it shows a poor quality of affairs poor quality of affairs which needs to be rectified as soon as possible so this is about it now moving to next article how can small scale farmers benefit from trees on farms how can small scale farmers benefit from trees on farms now we'll see this particular article with respect to gs paper number three gs paper number three agriculture agriculture and related developments agriculture and related development okay now guys this article it is talking about one particular concept that is agroforestry agroforestry first of all let's understand what is agroforestry so agroforestry refers to the practice of diversifying your land use traditionally suppose you are using your land for agriculture only you are using your land for agriculture only. So what can be done? This particular lands use lands use could be diversified more. So rather than just using it for agriculture, use it to plant trees. Use it to rear the livestock also. Okay. So diversifying land use, growing trees, growing trees with the agriculture, it is agroforestry. What it can do? It can enhance farmer's income. It can enhance farmer's income. Also, the trees that will be planted here, they can absorb carbon. They can absorb carbon. So, it will be a win-win situation. And government has come out with the National Agroforestry Policy 2014 to promote agroforestry. But up till now, this agroforestry has not been a success. Now, why it is not a success? You need to understand this thing. Now, guys, majority of farmers in India are small farmers, are small farmers, are marginal farmers. Often land that they have, this land is not their own. This land is rented. This land is rented. Now, suppose this is your farm. This is your farm. You will plant trees. You will plant trees. Now, these particular trees might become mature in 10 years. In 10 years. Small farmers, they don't have that capital that they'll put money today and they'll get they'll reap the benefit after 10 years that patience is not there economic viability is also not there and as the land is rented you don't know whether you'll have the same piece of land after 10 years or not so incentive to invest is less so therefore agroforestry in india has not become that successful now there are some good case studies that have been given in this article fine which can promote agroforestry in india so, one of an initiative that is mentioned in this particular article is a TOFI initiative, that is Tree Outside of Forest India initiative. TOFI, that is Tree Outside of Forest India initiative. Now, this initiative aims to enhance the agroforestry in India. Now, this particular initiative is joint initiative of US Aid, that is US Agency for International Development and India's Ministry of Environment, Forest and Climate Change. Now, this TOFI, it wants to assist the farmer so that on their fields they can grow trees and this TOFI aims to enhance the forest cover or agroforestry in seven states Andhra Pradesh, Assam, Haryana, Odisha, Rajasthan, Tamil Nadu, Uttar Pradesh. Now one of our main problem that comes that, uh, that comes here is water availability is water availability. Now often we find that the water is not there and trees need a lot of water. So what might happen? Trees might compete with crops. Trees might compete with crops in terms of water availability. This is a very big constraint. Now in this capacity, there is also another case study that we have. So a Bangalore based startup that is Well Labs. What they have come? They have come out with the open source water accounting tool. This tool is called as Jal Toll. Jal Toll. Now what happens here? This particular tool can tell you that in different different area which trees are compatible with which type of crops suppose you are growing x kind of crop now in karnataka with this x crop 
which type of trees are compatible which type of trees are incompatible for example they say mango they don't compete with kharif crops in karnataka fine coconut trees in tamil nadu demand more water than crops so here they'll compete so basically what can happen you can understand that which trees are going to compete with the crops which trees are not going to compete with the crops and by that you can carefully choose the type of trees that are to be grown you can carefully choose the type of trees that are to be grown also there are the tools that have come which can help the organizations and individuals to select the appropriate tree crop combinations for water stressed regions okay also also guys there are you can also find the native species of a tree that is suitable in your field in your field so by that land degradation can be reversed by that tree cover can be enhanced more incomes can be given to the farmers okay there is also one more tool diversity for restoration now this tool provides a tailored list of climate resilient species okay fine for example now uh, Kar karnataka region which type of trees are uh, trees are climate resilient here in north which trees are climate resilient that particular list is also provided so by this by this these kind of a tools such as the gel tool okay diversity for restoration these tools can assist the farmers and can help them to go towards the agroforestry more then there is also one more concept that is payment for ecosystem services this can also promote agroforestry in india now what is this payment for ecosystem services let's understand this thing now this is an initiative where some corporate where some corporate will pay farmer because they have helped uh, let me give you an example for example food processing company can pay to the forest to the, to the farmer for promoting for promoting the pollination for promoting the pollination now guys understand this thing that majority of food production in the world is possible because of the pollination that is done by the insects bees etc insects bees etc so basically the the farmers who are helping in the pollination they are to be they are to be incentivized they are to be given some money so payment for ecosystem services if a farmer has been responsible in conserving some ecosystem service then he needs to be paid he needs to be paid so we need to popularize this concept of payment for ecosystem services but the problem is that how you identify buyers and sellers of ecosystem service how you define that which farmer is leading how much of a role so this is something that's there okay so now we need to adopt agroforestry at scale particularly in the small farm holders fine and we need to keep their ecological and socio-economic factors that many number of times they are not able to support these trees etc the issue with respect to the land tenure is to be addressed so that they have the long land tenures and by that they can support the trees there so this is about it okay guys i hope that you have understood this particular article also this is guys all about the today i hope you have got it and i hope you are liking the initiative also so guys that is all if you have liked please do hit the like button please do support the initiative now we'll meet tomorrow till then take care of yourselves thank you so much